two worlds collide. Two rival regions. It's us against them. It's you versus him. It's one versus one. With the hope of the world comes the weight of expectation. A true battle of strength. The time is here. The time is now. A new age is upon us. Day number two of the WCS Global Finals here for 2018, and our four players have presented themselves as champions of StarCraft II, and are now looking to etch themselves in history and claim the Global Finals here in 2018. A warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here at BlizzCon around the world as well, as we crown ourselves a Global Champ. My name's Kyle Harris. I'll be your host throughout the next couple of hours. And to my right-hand side, Artosis in control, and Rotterdam gonna be breaking everything down here to get the day started. Gentlemen, yesterday, our opening week, everything leading up to this moment, it couldn't have been better when we see these four names standing in the bracket. I mean, a lot of people might be upset that Maru's not here, but I, I mean, we have SOS, the three-time champion, we have the defending champion, Rogue, we have the greatest non-Korean player of all time with Serral, and of course, the most solid Protoss in the world, stats. Yep. You can't complain about this top four. Oh, it's great in control. Maybe if one Terran <laughs> would have made the top four. I, I, I feel like there's some people out there that would have liked that a lot. But hey, they gave it the best shot. I think Maru ran into a really interesting thing where he might have been the better player, but he got outmaneuvered inside that best of yeah. series by his teammate that knows him so well. And that's part of StarCraft. That's fun to watch. So it's, it's unfortunate there's no Terran, but we kind of know why. Absolutely. I mean, I'm loving the top four, of course, like Dan said. I think everyone has a great story. Some people may think that Stats has the least, you know, appealing story of them all because it's not a back-to-back -back champ, it's not a three-time champ, it's not the first non-Korean champion, but Stats is that guy that's been around forever, especially in Legacy of the Void, and he always makes it into the top four. And of course, he has won his tournaments. This is not a guy that's mm. looking for his first victory, but for all those top fours that he's had, way more than everyone else, mm. it would absolutely be the crowning achievement of his career. So I actually think Stats' story is very beautiful, too. Yeah, it definitely would be. We're going to take a look back at yesterday and see kind of how everything went down, of course, because we had our four matches go down in the round of eight, and some really impressed. Some of them kind of fell by the wayside a little bit into in terms of what we expected to come out from those. Jeff, one of those in particular, we're going to start with Maru versus SOS first. I think a lot of people didn't really, a lot of people apart from <laughs> one, didn't really expect it to go quite the way it did with Maru kind of bombing out in the end. There is a lot of analysis about what makes a Terran player super great, and I think Maru does an amazing job of kind of encapsulating a lot of that. Yeah. He prepares very well, he's very aggressive, he makes the game chaotic. But in a tournament like BlizzCon, a lot of it too comes down to you have minimal preparation against your opponents, only a few days. And in that time, if your shtick is kind of figured out, you can be in a lot of trouble. So Maru had to go into this with his strengths, and he did a lot of proxy play. But SOS is just the engineer of what it takes to take someone down. So we are Maru less, but that doesn't mean that he did not win three GSLs and still put his stamp on history and make things interesting here as well. He dominated that first week, and it just yeah. shows how good these players are that he goes from dominating as hard as he did to facing SOS and getting dominated. SOS was arguably one of the players that he had to be most fearful of when it coming into the round of eight. I mean, it's so funny because you've got all these stories around the SOS, how he turns it up, you know, when it matters the most, and how it doesn't matter how good or how bad he looked in a certain phase of the tournament, because yep. he will step it up when it mattered. This time, I really think none of that, or really thought, actually, that none of that would be relevant, and I really thought with the year that Maru had, that Maru was going to win it, but I was shocked, man. To me, that was probably the biggest surprise of the year. Of course, as a West winning, if yeah. he would have looked great in the days before that, if he would have looked great yeah. just in any of his other series, I would be like, okay, Okay, that was a possibility. But with the year that Maru has had yeah, and the yeah. way that SOS played in round of 16, I thought there was no way, but I mean, that's StarCraft, right? Sometimes there is a way, especially with SOS. Yeah, Nostratosis, he's a, he's a preparation genius, some might say. 
Yeah, I, I mean, that is his MO. He kind of outmind games you, outsmarts you in these series. He never looks like the cleanest player. Never. He, we never talk about how he has the best micro or the best macro, right? We never talk about how he dominated a whole year. That's not SOS. And in fact, that kind of leads into why he is so powerful. He's kind of underestimated, and he brings something else, an extra, like, oomph that these other players do not have. Yeah. Let's talk about stats versus special as well. I think a lot of people kind of came in looking at special after he'd taken down Classic as potential to cause an upset there. However, stats came in, Jeff, showed why he is one of the dominant forces here at the tournament. I mean, there's a lot of people excited at the possibility of special pulling off another big upset against another Protoss that we spent all year talking about as being one of the absolute best. Uh, but reality came home here a little bit. I thought it was a really fun series and that the games were a lot closer than perhaps the score would suggest. <laughs> But Stats just kind of does it the Stats way. He's just very strong defensive. He is clean. We, you know, With SOS, he gets a little bit chaotic. It's a little bit messy. Macro might slip. But with Stats, you're looking at a player that this is kind of the embodiment of what peak StarCraft II can look like for the Protoss race. And that's yeah. a player that can hit you with a timing attack, can defend very well, and will just do all of it very, very strong. I absolutely love that best of five, James. I really thought it was. After that first one, even though it was a very surprising result, it wasn't the series that a lot of us hoped for, whether you were cheering for Maru or SOS. But then it was so nice, because Special did not play bad. We've obviously had in the past non-Korean players having deep runs, but then when they would lose, they lose in a one-sided series, and that kind of takes a little bit away from the great run. That was an amazing best of five. If you yeah. missed it, you got to watch it. I love the pace that Special was playing. It really felt that he was pushing stats to the limit, but that limit seemed to have no boundaries, man, because stats, <laughs> it, it felt, often, every now and then, it felt like I was watching an Archon mode. I mean, he's just like, he has two armies, and he's so mobile. He was so dynamic in his gameplay. I thought it was a spectacular series where I do think the better player won, but Special put up one hell of a fight. I, look, I think I have a really good way, finally, after so many years of casting and watching <laughs> stats, to describe him. Uh huh. Stats is like the concept of compound interest, okay? Oh, oh, here we go. Like, he started out very slow. He's like a pro league player and stuff. He's winning some games here and there. He qualifies for an MLG and things like that. And then the next year, he's a little bit better. And we're like, oh, yeah, he's, uh, his rank has gone up a little bit. And then the next year, a little bit better, but more better than the year before that. And we just keep seeing that. We're hitting this peak with stats right now where it's like, does anyone doubt that he is the best Protoss in the world? Dan, keep really? looking for a way to describe him, please. You know, <laughs> don't let the search stop there, okay? I'm done with it. I, I think that this is perfect. compound interest where we end with it, yeah. <laughs> what I do think is funny is that even though we have two Protosses in the semifinals, I think the two Protoss players that we have are almost polar opposites, right? Sure, where sure. Stats is this very solid and indeed quite consistent Protoss where if he is starting to go on a hot streak, you kind of see that coming and it's deep run after deep run. Yeah. And as well, it's just a roller coaster, man. Like yeah. one moment he looks like one of the best players in the world and after that you look at each other, it's like, is that as a West? I mean, what are you and watching? And then he cannon rushes. Yeah, like, yeah, no, you, you can do it all. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for that, Dan. There's 10 economics majors out there that are really excited about <laughs> all of that. Uh, let's move on, of course, here in the round of eight. You've got Rogue going up against TY. That, for me, was really the standout series of the day, Rotterdam. Looking at how both players played that out, a really great series. What I loved the most was some of the facial uh, reactions that we saw in that series, especially in that game five, when Rogue once again opened up with those two hatcheries, and then he sees the Marines and SCV showing up, and he's just like, God, man, do these Terrans ever stop? Stop building their buildings on the other side of the map. But oh. it was a spectacular series, especially the Lost and Found game, where even though TY was ahead, I mean, that was just an awesome, fact, an epic battle. I mean, it just kept going back and forth. And I think even in that final game, it was messy, it was crappy, but definitely exciting for the fans. I mean, it went the distance, both in like almost all the games, but also yep. in the strategy like Kevin talked about. He's like, no, no, I'm proxying against you. That's how I'm going to actually mm. win or lose a series. But then also Rogue digging deep in those games and coming out with the win in the end. Like it had a kind of a, I don't know for you guys, but for me it had an interesting feeling of like, somehow I felt like TY won this series, but it's like the result is actually Rogue. Did. I, don't, I don't have enough time to explain that, but it's like, <laughs> it's weird to talk about the top four without TY. Rogue survived TY as opposed to beating him in my opinion, but it, it still makes him the stronger player for it because that was the closest series. And it, one thing to add in here about Rogue is the year for him was not perfect like <laughs> last year. He didn't look quite as right, strong, right. but I feel like in this TY series, he kind of took that back a little bit, especially in that final game, right? Things are going wrong. We kind of see the, his, the look on his face, but 
he just battled right through. He always knew what he was doing. He had some sick comebacks in games that he won and lost. Uh, I think that Rogue is looking in peak form right now. I think it helps a lot as well, Dan, since that a lot of Rogue's losses through GSL and things like that were to Maru, right? So for him to kind of gain a little bit of that ZVT kind of confidence back almost, it's got to be doing wonders for him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, he doesn't need that matchup once again, sure, ZVT, sure. but definitely Rogue now kind of showing, right? And Maru and TY are not completely interchangeable, but close enough. And now that he's, he's beaten a player like that, he gets to watch that other side of the bracket with their ZVZ. I think that Rogue is a real threat here once again. Final series in yesterday's round of eight was Serral going up against Dark, and it's difficult to describe it other than being outclassed. Dark was outclassed, Jeff. In every way. I, I, I love how this is being set up because Rogue did get to watch that ZVZ, and this is like a, that's got to be a weird thing for him where he's not looking at that going, ah, this is how I'll beat Serral. He's got to be looking at me going, holy cow, this yeah. Finnish <laughs> player. This was a manhandling, and this is in the top eight of BlizzCon. It's a guy in Dark that is one of the best. He calls out Serral. He says, I don't think you're one of the best. I think I could have had a worse draw. I'm excited to show people that I, what I can do against you. And you got to be careful what you wish for. Oh, because yeah. this is a guy who's like, I could wrestle a Silverback Gorilla. And everyone's like, I don't think you can. He's like, watch me do it. And then the Silverback <laughs> Gorilla just kind of pounds him into the ground for about an hour. And we're all like, no, you cannot. Yeah. A uh, stunning performance by Serral. I think we all knew that he was capable of it, but it still just looks so good to watch him do what he does best. He is so strong in almost every <laughs> phase of the game. <laughs> oh. I, I feel like there's a... There's Dark a weird... is improving a lot, though. It was really nice of him to make that a good series, you know? That's, yeah. that's true. Throwing some mad shade there, <laughs> you so... thermal man. Ooh. I love those, those Terran Twitter accounts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's only Terrans, you're right, it's weird. Uh, but anyway, regardless of that, it's Serral moving on here, and I think a lot of people here around the world as well are seeing Serral's run as almost kind of inspirational and kind of mind-bending at uh, what we're seeing here, Jeff, at the moment. It's bigger than BlizzCon. It to is. Do it at BlizzCon <laughs> is where that can happen, but the idea that, and, and Kevin's been talking about this all year, but it was GSL versus the world where they're like, this is where it stops. This yeah. is where reality yeah. crushes in and the Koreans remain as dominant as they've always been. But here, we're in the top four. If he beats Rogue and goes to those finals, that in and of itself is monumental. But if he somehow raises that trophy, this is bigger than anything for the foreigner scene in particular that's happened in StarCraft ever in 20 ever. plus years. Yep. Yeah, that's really important to like triple underline because every single year we'll have a foreigner here, right? A non-Korean player playing and it's just kind of like, oh, I think, you know, maybe he can take some maps and win a series and that's always exciting. Last year we were kind of cautiously optimistic that Neeb can get a top eight, a top four, whatever. Sure. Even when Special got there, no one was expecting him to win the tournament in the yeah. top four, right? Uh, but with Cyril, we just look at him, it's like, oh. He can do it. He like, can do it. straight up. I mean, he looks like the best player in the world. Yeah, that's the main difference. I think last year we were all very excited to see Special play in the semifinals, but he got there after a quarterfinals against the other non-Korean, and then he got into the semifinals as a massive underdog. We all hoped that he would put up a good fight against Su, but Su was the favorite there. And even if he would make it past there, we're like in the final, that's going to be almost no. impossible. Now it's the other way around. In a weird universe, it feels that Serral is the favorite for a lot of diehard Starcraft fans out there. Sure, that sure. They've been watching him play throughout the entire year. They're like, Serral actually looks like the best player in this tournament, and that's just crazy. Let's take a look at the bracket then as our two semifinals are going to be the first matches that are upcoming here today. And it is going to be SOS versus Stats in a PvP, Rogue versus Serral in a ZVZ. We guarantee ourselves a PvZ final at the end of the day to round things out. Our semifinals being best of five, and then our grand final best of seven. I want to talk to you gentlemen about our second semi-final that's going to be coming up, which is that Rogue versus Serral matchup. Dan, you kind of piqued my interest a little bit at the, mm. whilst we were talking about Serral's position and Rogue's position in the sense that Rogue has had an opportunity to go back and watch those Serral matches, but uh, it's a bit of an interesting spot to take a look at. Alternatively, we could talk about SOS versus Stats. <laughs> as that pops up for the beginning. James, you let me loose, and I will talk <laughs> about anything you want to talk about right now. Right. Well, uh. <laughs> seems we're going to SOS versus Stats first. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about this PvP. Dan, what do you got for me? Well, I got for you uh, the fact that SOS is the greatest Protoss versus Protoss player in the world, sure. bar none, easily. 
So I'm looking at this, and the thing is, <laughs> stats is so good, so you should never count him out. <laughs> but I think with that, I, I don't think that anyone is going to disagree with me when I say that SOS is the favorite here. What? Oh, yes. we're both well, going to disagree with you, Dan. I think we're both <laughs> going to disagree with you. I think Stats is the favorite. One sec, I'll get comfy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give us it, Roddy. I, I, like, I don't know why Dan is so obsessed with these crazy builds of SOS. SOS is obviously a champ, and he's a legend. He's a two-time yeah. WCS champion. So we all know that he's capable of winning here. But I think if you analyze the play styles, Stats is a lot more solid. And I think Stats is a lot more complete. And I think SOS is going to be a bit more predictable. A lot of people <laughs> gave SOS has a lot of criticism uh -huh. for opening up Blink game after game after game in the recent GSL uh, Super Tournament final. I don't think that was totally justified, but I think when it comes to different spectrums of PvP, different build orders, I really like stats so much better than SOS. Did you say that SOS is more predictable than stats? Did, that, did you say that? Yes. Oh, look at Jeff, that. You <laughs> Wait, Artosis. Oh, yeah, you tweeted that. You tweeted that back in June 2016. 9, 2016. <laughs> but now it's relevant, potentially. Yeah, I think I probably well. tweeted that every single year, to be perfectly <laughs> frank. <laughs> so you can definitely dig up some more of those, Wax Angel. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, it, you should always just kind of count on him. If he's here, he delivers. And he's going to have these mind games. It, the kid has such a complete view of PvP. Okay, right. let me, let me yeah. argue against you for a moment. Yeah, stats is more solid, but it's not about being solid necessarily. This is a best of five. SOS can pull out three games. He can do those mind games. Yeah. If you think of all like the globetrotter moments of professional Protoss versus Protoss, 90% of it is SOS winning in situations where he shouldn't, where there's like, he snipes all your observers <laughs> or he doesn't have range on his phoenixes and he no, kills your ranged phoenixes. Just to interject for a moment, so one of my favorite parts of doing this show over mm. opening week, over brackets and everything like that, has been every time you've talked about this, I get this cheeky look from In Control <laughs> that just <laughs> peers through my soul. And Jeff, I, I would love to hear your response. Uh, it's, it's just, I feel like we're like an old <laughs> married couple and he's the one that talks for both of us all the time. So I just get to kind of like <laughs> giggle and look over at him as he's explaining something that he doesn't even really believe necessarily, but he kind of does. But you know, we're having a good time. I, I, what I like about this, and, and to, be, to give credit where credit's due, Dan was right about SOS versus Maru. And, yeah. and, and in retrospect, because I didn't believe that either. I thought Maru was going to monster mode SOS, but he's a tough guy to prepare for it. Where I run up against my inability to see SOS coming out of this as a winner is what Kevin's saying. In PvP, it's really hard to, to really throw off someone, yeah, yeah. especially like stats. It's going to have to come down to they have similar units and SOS out-executes stats. Uh, I don't see that. And it, it, like if SOS showed us the most beautiful can rush ever against uh, a Zerg, I know, but sure. still the same principles are there, I'd be like, okay, he's got some stuff he can do. But that was one of the crappiest yeah. cannon rushes I've ever seen. <laughs> so if like that's what SOS brought to BlizzCon, and then he's just going to be like, well... You know what's interesting as well is that they both already played PvP in this tournament. Of course, yeah. that's a week ago, and as Wes showed us yesterday, that the performance in the round of 16 maybe doesn't matter that much when it comes to performing on this stage. But as well, or excuse me, his stats looked incredibly good in both PvPs. Of course, one of them was against Has. I mean, you kind of <laughs> believed in that one, yeah. then, but that was the only one. But the other one was against Showtime, who is obviously a very solid player. But the way that stats approached those games, it, it just really felt that he was so on top of everything that happened in the beginning stages of the game. Yeah. He will do whatever he can to not make the games go very weird, and that's when he shines the most. And I mean, as well as at that series against Zest, where I feel like at the final moment, we're like, all right, as well, this is it. You know, you're eliminated. And he's like, no, he's not. My opponent's going to make a mistake, and I'm going to win. And I'm going <laughs> to squeeze my way into the top eight, and that is what happened. So in that regard, I think Stats looked a lot more solid as well. Well, let's talk about our other matchup, our semifinal. As I jumped the gun before, I forgot we were doing things in alphabetical order here. Zerg comes at the end, so that's how it was going to be. <laughs> Zerg versus Zerg, Rogue versus Mara, uh, sorry, Rogue versus Sarah, even, I should say, as our last semifinal of the day. And this is one where... I'm just going to ask you the same question I tried to ask before. Uh, you said that, you know, Rogue had had an opportunity to watch mm -hmm. back at several ZVZ, and Rogue does approach the matchup a little bit differently to Dark. Certainly. He plays ZVZ very different from the rest of the Koreans. Uh, the Korean ZVZ style is still pretty Roach-based, so you'll see these players like Dark, they'll go Roach into Ravager against Lurker, and it's like, yeah, I guess technically Biles can kill the Lurkers, but 
That's not necessarily how you want to approach it. Whereas Rogue, I think, actually rushes up to that Lurker tech so much more quickly. He wants to play the tech-heavy endgame similar to Serral. So that's where I find this to be a very interesting matchup. And I don't disagree. And obviously, Rogue is very, very good. I just feel like, if anything, I, I, I want to say, I think the psychological warfare of watching Dark get absolutely manhandled like that, right. there is no world where Rogue's sitting backstage going like, pfft. I got this easy. <laughs> Dark has been the other guy he's been battling yeah. all year. When they talk about the matchup, the two of them come up with ideas. Dark went into that with his re-envisioning of how to take out Serral. That was not the first time he faced him. It's yes. a rematch. This was his improved upon ideas. And I haven't seen someone miss that much, you know, in a long time. It makes you know, like being a weather person, it's like, it's snow tomorrow, and then it's a yeah. thunderstorm, and they're like, well, ah, you know, it's my job. That was what Dark just did. <laughs> it, was, it was so bad. I think Rogue looks at that and says, I'm here at BlizzCon, I'm in the top four, I'm going to play my best. Sure. But I, he did not game plan. There's no way. I'd, Roddy's Late final game thoughts? Lurker Tech, maybe. I'm just su super curious to see what Rogue will bring to this show, especially yeah. like if he does try to do odd stuff, like rushing into Lurkers quicker than you're supposed to in this matchup. If there is one thing that we've been praising Serral for even before he won tournaments, is his ability to scout almost anything at any given phase of the game in all three matchups, but especially in ZVZ. Spire goes down, Overseer flies over. Roach Warren gets thrown on, Zergling runs into the main base. Serro, his scouting is so good. So I really think that if Rogue wins this, and of course he can because he's the reigning champ for a reason, yeah, it's yeah. got to be off the back of just straight up outplaying Serro. And Difficult. we haven't seen that in a very, very long time, but maybe Rogue is the guy. We definitely haven't seen it this tournament here for sure. Thank you very much, gentlemen. As uh, we can take a look at the schedule here, as we have three matches going to be going down today, not only our semifinals, but later on that grand final as well. You do not want to be missing any of these matches. All four of our players remaining ch world champions, champions across the board, looking to gain a title here in 2018 WCS Global Finals. We're going to go to a short break, ladies and gentlemen. And when we return, we're going to start things with our semi-finals for the WCS Global Finals.